All right, so we're replacing the broken, well, bent trailer axle on the trailer. And uh, these were wore out off the leaf springs. So we're gonna cut out and make some new ones. That one's not that bad, but this one's kind of holes kind of wallered. So I'll kind of show you how we do that. We use uh, Inkscape. So the first thing we do is we go in here to file and we always go to document properties. You don't have to do this because you can resize it at the end according to what you drew, but we always just get started with this. We switch to inches. Then on width, I just put the size of my table. So roughly on what we're gonna do. And so that gets us started. So we'll come back down here. I'm trying to do this one-handed, maybe. So we'll kind of take some rough measurements. Maybe. So 4.375. Then we go up in the software, we'll click on our square, and we'll go up here and resize it to width 4.375. And on height, go back down here, it looks about like an inch to an inch and a quarter. So I'll just say 1.320. So then we'll go back up here. All right. I don't know if you can see. Those holes are going to be about a half inch, probably. Yeah, just a hair over. So what we've done, the, the hole on the plasma is going to be an inside cut. So your kerf width, you're going to have to make up for that. So we'll enter point... 584, and then we're going to add 50 thousandths in there, plus 0 .050. 0. So that's what size we're going to need to do the hole in the software. So we're going to come up here to our circle tool, and we're going to put 0 .634 for the width and 0 .634 for the height. So there's one of our circles. So what we have to do next is we have to measure center to center. So if I can get this right. Yeah, try to get it as close as we can. Three point one zero. So the way that I do this is I turn our snapping on and I over here I snap to the centers pretty much you can kind of see what we've got there. That's how ours is set up. So then I'll take and draw a square that is the width of the centers, 3.10, and I'll put it the width. And then I'll take this circle and I'll snap it to the edge in the center of the circle. Then I'll duplicate this circle. I'll come over, well, maybe. Yeah, I duplicated the square. So now we'll duplicate the circle. Okay, and we'll take it and drag it to this corner, the center. If it'll do it. It wants to be tricky sometimes. All right, so I had to zoom in. So now what we'll do is we'll take and delete the square. We'll take, select all of those holes and then we'll go over here under path and we'll combine those two. So then we take and just move this up. And if you do this, you can you can center it without using your line and distribution distribute tool. So now we have the shape with the holes in it. But the next thing I want to do is I want to add these radiuses on the edges so that they kind of match. So we'll take and we'll just do a, I don't know, we'll try a half inch, see what it looks like on the circle. So we'll go. 0 0.50, 0 0.50, we'll go over here and snap it to the center, let's see, let me zoom in, we'll see if it does it, alright, I'm going to duplicate it to all four corners, Okay. All right. 
So now once we have that done, this is what it should look like. So I'm gonna try and hold the camera while I'm doing this. So we're gonna hold shift. I may have to set this here. We're gonna hold shift while that one's selected and then select the square. So you have, should have this one and this selected. Then we're gonna go up here to path and we're gonna do difference. So what that did was that give us our radius. So we're gonna do that on all the rest of the three of these so all four corners match. So when you're done, you should have something that looks like that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all, and we're gonna combine it, then we're gonna go up here and zero it out to the top, then we're gonna click on enlarge to our page, we're gonna zoom out, then we're gonna select this, we're gonna duplicate it, and move it down so that we have two. We'll highlight them all, duplicate again, and then we're gonna move them over this way. Because I need a total of four. So and I'm just using the arrows to move it just because it's easier holding the camera. So now if you zoom out, we've got all four ready to cut. So then we'll select all. We're gonna save as and I'm gonna type in trailer brackets. Okay. All right, so what I have found next is while we're doing this, we saved it as a SVG, but we also have to save it as a DXF. And I've kind of, I've had mixed emotions about this since I've got the MyPlasm CNC. Sometimes if I save it as a R14, it ends up being 5,000% the size it's supposed to be. And then sometimes if I save it to R12, it doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to pull the file in. And then if it does, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't pull the circles. It doesn't pull, you know, whatever. It might leave some of it out. So then I've had to go in and actually on Inkscape, I've had to go in and break apart everything in the drawing and save it again and sometimes that works. So I've kind of had to play around with it here. So I just kind of save it and see. And then I go into the myoplasm from there and I do a test piece to see if it's going to pull it up. So trailer brackets. I see this one's going to work and it'll be the right size too. So we go down here, trailer brackets, we pull it in. And then I always double check my cuts to make sure it's cutting one out at a time. So we got starting point zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So that'll cut out good. So then we've got our lead in to where we want the tip offset of 60 thousandths. And you can play around with the tip offset. I've just found that that, that number works good for what we do to get it pretty precise to the size we want. So then when we're done with this, we just hit the check mark and then we're ready to start the cut and we'll go to the plasma table. Okay, so now we're at the plasma table and we've got our plates set up there. We're gonna cut these out of 3 sixteenths. So we'll go in the software. Let's see, we gotta reset this so it communicates with the table. We'll move the torch over and probably start these somewhere Get them set up right here. I don't know if you've seen our new uh, magnetic torch holder, but I'll show you how it works. It's pretty pretty neat. We welded washers and these inside holes kind of line up with the holes on the bolts, and then we take it and maybe if not one-handed, snaps back in, and we're back ready to cut. So it works out pretty good. So now that we've got that set, our machine, make sure it's on 65 amps. So we go over here, we know we're gonna start at this bottom left corner. And we gotta make sure we're at the right settings here. So I have, that's eighth inch. You can kinda see our settings that we have set up. So we're gonna go down to 3 16 
There's our settings for that. And if all is good, I think we are ready to cut. Let me make sure my compressor's on. Because I've had it off, it's on. So now we're ready to cut, so we'll go up here to start and cut. system on too. Those electrodes may be starting to get wore out there, I don't know. It looks like it. I think I might have to cut them again when these get done. I think I'm going to swap the electrodes out after this and try another run. I'm going to e-stop it because I need to get that piece out that tipped up because I'm not sure if the torch will hit it or not, but I'll pull it out of the way just because I don't want to risk it. I mean, not that it would it just pull my torch off, but if we can prevent it, I don't want to. So now we'll turn the e-stop back on. Then we'll have to reset and then we'll hit start again. We'll see how these work. I don't I don't know if I'm absolutely happy with them. So I don't know if you can see. There's the ones we cut out. And there's the other ones side by side. So. I think I'm going to recut these though. I'm not. I'm like, they're not bad. I think I'm going to change the electrode. You can kind of see right there. The ele that electrode's. It's, it's wore out. So I think I'm gonna change it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lower the size of the hole and change the electrodes and see if we can go from there. Try it again. Okay, so we have the new file brought in. We resized the holes to right at a half inch with a fifty thousandths over, so it's 0 0.550. So that way, I I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't take into consideration the egg shape of this hole. So yeah, go figure. But uh, so we've got it zeroed back out and we changed the electrodes. This electrode had seen better days. So we changed it out and the tip. So now we're gonna try another cut and see what we get. So we'll go from there. And already that looks a whole lot better. Even sounds better. You've been around plasma a lot. You can about tell just from the sound if, if the tip is around. Right. Yeah, that looks a whole lot better.
So this cuts a whole lot better. Still having a problem sometimes getting rid of this little jaggedness. It don't happen all the time. I don't know if it's moisture in the lines or what it is, but uh, I love my Everlast 82i, especially for the price. I think I only paid like $1,300 for it, but I'm really considering my next big purchase will probably be a hypertherm, probably 65, hypertherm 65. I don't know if we'll go with the sink, but we'll probably go with just the hypertherm 65, just because I've, I've heard really good things about it, and you know, hypertherm appears to be number one in the plasma cutting industry, so, so we may do that. But, but yeah, overall, very happy. From design to cut in just a matter of minutes. So, and now we have a good replacement for these. So, should be good to go. If y'all have any questions, just feel free to ask or send me a message, whatever you want to do. But I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks a lot.